using their constitutional rights. And she said that our people were out there, we were adults fighting for the right to twerk and gyrate in front of your children. So when we've had all of the hate in our district, Angie King had an opportunity to speak out and to say, these are people practicing their rights under the Constitution. And they might disagree, but this is their right. She didn't do that. Instead, she leaned into the hatred. Our group saw it. We got death threats shortly after people saying the next protest, they were gonna drive a car through our events. That was what she did. That was the deciding factor for me that there was no more sitting on the sidelines. I'd been asking who was gonna run and finally I decided that the next time I asked that question, I needed to be standing in front of the mirror. So we made that decision. We are looking at real things to benefit this district. We have with the American Rescue Plan, with, every, with broadband access that's supposed to be coming, but if you look at the map, the 84th district is still largely uncovered mm -hmm. under the new projects to come. There's a little bit of all glaze that gets and a tiny little portion of Dark County right up against the Mercer County border. We wanna to continue to push to expand it into all of the 84th district so that we can invite those tech jobs into the area so that we can get more business, more high paying jobs, and might I add more union jobs. In yes. The Absolutely more union. Am I the loud mouth trans woman that doesn't care what anybody says? I am also the wife of a union worker. So we are going to fight for our union. Local 329. That, we're going to work on education. I don't know how many of you have looked at these education bills that have passed, but what we have done is we're saying we're not decreasing the funding for our education. That is a lie. What we're doing is we're telling all of you that the public school system is indoctrinating your children. And then we're gonna say, but if you'd like to pull your kid out, you can take that money out of your public school system and you can put it into an unaccountable private school that will not serve every child in that district. Yeah, that needs to stop. Our public schools need to be fully funded. There needs to be never be a day when another teacher has to take money out of her own Absolutely. pocket to buy supplies. We cannot say that teachers are this amazing job and we entrust them with our children, but we're going to pay you poverty wages and then expect you to buy your own crayons for your classroom. We've got to be providing for that. We've got to be fixing our tax code. Unlike the federal government, your state government does not have the option to go into a deficit. So when we cut tax revenue, what we end up doing is we have a shortfall, we cut essential programs. We saw it during COVID. Where were the cuts at? They were in education. Always. It's never a program that benefits the wealthiest in our society. It's always our public education, our human services. We need to make sure that those who are at the top of the ladder, the CEOs, everyone in our state that have benefited from the labor of Ohio citizens are paying their fair share. And when it comes time to look at a tax cut, that tax cut needs to go to our middle class. It needs to go towards our poor so that we can lift them out of poverty and create a strong, vibrant middle class. That is what we're about. I will absolutely fight Angie King on every one of these social issues, but the important thing is what we're going to do for the economy and what we're going to do for our communities. And I have said, you'll see it, it's going to be a hallmark of my campaign. I do not care if it's a Republican idea. I do not care if it's a Democrat idea. The only thing I care about is if it's a good idea. Yeah. And that's what we've got to focus on. So for anyone, all of the people on the other side that have said horrible things about me and who I am, I got an open seat at the table. I will not take their bigotry with me to Columbus, but I will take their ideas. I will sit down, give me the worst person, some of you know who I'm talking about, uh, who cannot stand me. But if you want to talk to me about it, the economy and what we can do for your farms, what we can do for your public schools, 
I will put that aside and I will sit down and talk because unlike Angie, I realize that when I run, I am doing a job interview with my future employer. And in no job that I have ever seen, do you get to apply, get hired, and then hide from your boss for the next two years. <laughs> but we will, if the rest is, we will be there having town hall events on a very regular basis in all three counties, because I know some, some people forget that there are three counties in this district. Um, so we're gonna touch on every one of those. We're gonna be there. We're gonna have an open line of communication. This is gonna be a campaign that is going to be about accessibility. So along the way, I invite every one of you to follow what we're doing. I want your input. I am very openly saying I am not the subject matter expert on every single policy. I can't tell you what we need to do about farm policy, about farm policy, because I'm not a farmer. But our farmers can tell us. And our best ideas come from the people who are in the thick of it every single day. So we want to listen when I fall short, and trust me, I will. Call me out on it. Let me know what we need to be doing to make sure that we are showing that the Democratic Party, that our Democratic candidates, we're actually able to chew, you know, chew gum and walk at the same time. We can talk about civil rights, we can talk about you know, abortion access and, the repro and reproductive freedom. But we can also talk about those economic issues because those are where we're gonna improve the community. We are going to make sure that we are improving our economy and we're protecting the rights of the people who are living in this district. So if so, feel free to look me up. I'm on Facebook. I do not have campaign contributions set up yet because I still have to file my treasurer's report, but we'll get there, doing it on Monday. Um, but we'll have that, but you can also find me on Twitter or X or YZ, whatever we're calling it this week, um, by looking up Ari, the number four, Ohio, and I welcome everybody to be a part of the campaign. It's going to be a long, hard year, and I can't tell you what the outcome is going to be, but I can promise you one thing. I'm going to give my opponent hell. Yeah.